They have done it again, and this is where you could find anything about anyone online. In this video, I will show you how to use tools and methods to discover and investigate a person's online presence, conduct digital investigation, and collect data for penetration testing. Suppose you want to find out the real name of someone who uses a pseudonym online. You can use this handy chart from Intel Techniques Com to guide you through the process. Stay with me to the end of this video, and I will show you how hackers used to hack any ATM without OTP verification. But please note that Roladel Business is not in any way promoting or encouraging any form of cybercrime with this video rather to inform and educate their viewers on this channel. Don't ever use it against others because if you do, you're responsible for the consequences of indulging in this format. Also, do well to check our course on how to hack any social media account. I pin the comments in the comments box below. Now back to the video. As you can see, there are many sources of data that can help you identify someone by their real name. Some of them are governmental, some are commercial, and some are social media. Let's explore each of them in more detail. Depending on the country, some governmental websites may provide public information about people or organizations. For example, you can search for voter registration, property record, court cases, or business license. However, these resources may vary by location and availability, so I won't go into too much detail here. Just keep in mind that they exist, and you can search for them online when you need them. You may also need to use some advanced search techniques to find them. One of the most powerful tools for OSINT is Google, but not just any Google search. You need to use some special tricks to make Google reveal more than it normally does. These tricks are called Google Dorks. It's like AI, and they were first discovered by Johnny Long in 2002. He found out that some Google search queries could expose vulnerable systems or sensitive information. He called them Google Dorks, and he collected them in a database that you can explore. I'll leave the link in the description. Of course, we are not going to use Google Dorks for illegal purposes. We are only interested in finding information that is legally available online, but Google Dorks can still help us with that. Here are some examples of Google Dorks that can help us find information about someone's real name. This query will search for the exact phrase this person on Instagram. The quotation marks tell Google to match the words exactly, and the site operator tells Google to limit the search to a specific domain. This query will do the same as the previous one, but it will also exclude the results from the targets on account. This way, we can see if the target has commented or liked any posts on other Instagram accounts, which may reveal their real name or other clues. This query will search for PDF files that contain the words CV or curriculum vitae and the words John and Doe. This can help us find the target's resumes which may contain their real name, education, work experience, or other personal details. One more thing to note about Google dorks is that they are not limited to Google. You can also use them on other search engines such as Bing, Yandex, and DuckDuckGo. Sometimes these search engines may give you results that Google doesn't, so it's worth trying them as well. Sometimes you may want to find more information about a person online, such as their contact details, social media profiles, or background history. One way to do this is to use people's search websites, which are specialized in collecting and displaying data about individuals. You can search for a person by using their real name, username, email, or phone number. Now let's talk about databases. Data breaches are a serious problem that affect millions of people and organizations. Sometimes the data that is leaked or stolen from these breaches is made available online either for free or for sale. This data can include email addresses, passwords, personal details, and more. Security researcher Troy Hunt has created a website which allows you to check if your email address has been compromised in any of these breaches. Comment on your country below and I will provide the website for you. Another most popular website that can help you with this is Hashed.com. This website works similarly to Troy Hunt's website, but it also shows you the passwords or password hashes that are associated with your email address. This can help you to find out if your password has been reused on other websites, which can increase the risk of your accounts being hacked. Another clue that can help you find a person online is their phone number. You can use user-supplied databases of phone numbers, such as Mint.com. This website allows you to search for phone numbers from different countries and see if they have any comments or ratings from other users. Phony Info is one of the most advanced tools to scan phone numbers using only free resources. The goal is to first gather basic information such as country, area, area, carrier, and line type on any international phone numbers with high accuracy. Then try to determine the VoIP provider or search for footprints on search engines to try. I do identify the owner. Imagine you have a photo and you want to discover its origin or where else it has been used. How do you do that? You use a reverse image search tool such as Google Images. These tools allow you to upload an image or enter an image URL and see similar or identical images on the web. You can also use Tiny, which has a different algorithm than Google and can give you different results. But that's not 
all. The image itself can also reveal a lot of useful information, such as the camera model, the location, the date, and more. This is called EXIF data, and it can be very helpful if it hasn't been removed. For example, you can use the map coordinates to find out where the picture was taken, or you can use the camera serial number to see if there are other pictures taken with the same camera on the internet using StolenCameraFinder.com. To view the EXIF data, you can use image editing tools, or you can use a simple and free software called EXIF tool, which works on any platform. Or you can use online services such as ExifData.com, or Mint stands for Social Media Intelligence, and it is a specialized form of OSINT. Social media platforms are rich sources of information as they reveal the interests, opinions, activities, locations, relationships, and behaviors of millions of users. By using SACMAN techniques, you can collect, analyze, and monitor this data to gain insights, evidence, or leads for your investigation. Facebook is one of the most popular and widely used social media platforms, with over 2.8 billion monthly active users. Here are some tools that can help you extract useful information from Facebook. Extract Face is a tool that can download all the data from a Facebook profile or a group such as posts, comments, likes, reactions, photos, videos, friends, members, etc. You can use this tool to create an offline copy of the data, which you can then use for further analysis or as evidence. Now this is a cool one. Facebook's sleep stats can estimate the sleeping patterns of a Facebook user based on their online and offline status. It can show you when they are most likely to be awake or asleep and how much they sleep on average. You can use this tool to infer their habits, routines, or time zones. There is so much data that is not easy to find or analyze, and you might miss some important connections or insights. This is where automating OSINT comes in. Spiderfoot is a tool that can scan your target and find out everything and anything about it. It can query more than 200 public data sources at once, and you can customize which sources you want to use. It can also scan by use cases, such as finding out what your target exposes to the internet, checking if your target is malicious, or gathering intelligence from different open sources. The last one is ideal for passive reconnaissance, which means you don't interact with your target directly. The Harvester is a tool that can fetch valuable information about your target on the information gathering stage. It is great for finding domain-related information and harvesting emails. It can use various resources to fetch the data, such as search engines, social networks, and DNS records. It can also perform active reconnaissance, which means you interact with your target directly, such as by doing DNS reverse lookup, DNS, TDL expansion, and DNS. Brute Force is a tool that can perform information gathering thoroughly and quickly. It is a web reconnaissance framework that has a lot of modules for passive reconnaissance, such as searching for domains, emails, contacts, credentials, locations, vulnerabilities, and more. If you are familiar with Metasploit, it will be easier to learn as it has a similar usage model. If you are looking for something powerful that can check the visibility of your company on the internet, this is the go-to tool. Maltego is a tool that can analyze complex environments and visually present them. It can do data mining and data correlation, and it works with entities such as people, companies, websites, documents, and more. You can connect these entities and gather more information about them from different sources such as social media, email, phone, etc. The distinctive feature of this tool is Transform, which are plugins that help you run different kinds of tests and data integrations with external applications. Keep in mind that I have only scratched the surface, and there are many more techniques that are simple yet effective. However, some of these techniques can also be used for harm, so please use them responsibly. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.